This man represented the U.S. in 30 World Cup qualifiers, played 11 World Cup games. He's played for the LA Galaxy for more than for 11 years, and then he retired in 2007. By the way, the number 13, which he wore, also retired. That is the first in MLS history. Take a look at this guy in action. Oh. Do you remember all of those? Oh yeah. yeah, look at that. I was yeah. Much younger then. Much younger then. <laughs> but still, I mean, just watching and, wow. and seeing how this sport grabbed this country, it, it, you know, when you were at its sort of infancy, I guess, you know? Yeah, but, right when right when we were really trying to establish soccer in the country. Because when I grew up, there was no soccer. There was yeah. nothing beyond, you know, high school, maybe college a little bit, and we are really trying to figure it out. But during that time when I first came about, it was going overseas to play for a little bit, but coming back to help establish you know, the MLS here. 164 international games. You started when you were five years old. So this game, this sport, was in your blood. What Sorry. did it take for you to go, I, I'm gonna retire? Like, what was that decision process like for you? Probably one of the most difficult decisions I had to make, you know, but at the time, it was the right decision. I had a longer career than most playing till I was 37 years old, which is, that's a rarity. You know, uh -huh. hardly anyone does it, but it, it was tough. I had some injuries that had come up, and it seemed to be the right time where I, I realized, you know what, it's time to step away. It's a young man's game. Yeah. You know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of let them have their time. And That's and hard to be, say, isn't it? It, it is. It, it's very difficult to yeah. say, but, you know, Everybody goes through it at some point in sports. Sure. Yeah, and speaking of time, though, you have a two-year-old little boy, and how yeah. how is it to uh, be able to spend more time with your family? Well, I, I have two boys now. Two I boys. have a little, yeah. little seventh-month-old as well, and uh, it's it's great. You know, I love it. It's it's <clears> one of the things that gives me joy. You know, being able to spend time, and it's difficult to balance out. You know, as I'm an analyst now, so I'm still on the road. You know, it's tough. You know, just the other day, my son came into the room when I had left in the early morning and told my wife, it's just like, where's daddy? And she's like, oh, well, he's at work. And, and he's like, again? Yeah. You know, it's one of those things I hear that my heart just Aww. breaks, you know? But you know, there, if you look at, I played football, and, and there are a lot of professional football players right now, Brett Favre being one of them that said in the press, I don't know what I would do if I had a son. I don't know if I'd want them to play this game. Soccer is different. Would you, do you see your kids? Do you, because of your history, do you want them to sort of carry on that tradition in your family? I don't know necessarily if it's the tradition. I do want them to play. I want to, I, yes, I'm gonna put him in soccer. If he wants to be a part of it, mm -hmm. I think that's great because then he can establish, I think, his own self-identity within the sport. Right. You know, I think it's important that he plays sports. I want him to play a team sport you know, and an individual sport, you know, so he can learn all the, the variety of lessons, you know, teamwork, you know, following instruction, how to be a leader. Those are all important things that will go not just within sport but in life. Well, so you're going to be analyzing the upcoming 2014 World Cup. Are you, are, you, are you nervous about that, or are you feel comfortable doing it? Uh, uh, you, you know what? At this point, I think I'm, I'm comfortable. It's a difficult and a little bit of a touchy situation because there's still players that I played with exactly. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. and against. Okay. You know, yeah. So I'm talking about people that if, if they hear what I'm saying, they can call me up, you know, because we've been exactly. friends and just say, hey, what are you yeah. talking about? You know, and I don't want to damage friendships, but I have to realize, you know, this is my job now. Exactly. You know, yes, and, it and is. If they're true professionals, you know, they know that what I'm saying comes from my experience, and, and most likely, since they're at a top level players too, they understand it. They, look, every player knows when they played a bad game, they know when they made a mistake, and yeah. they, they know when they played a good game. It's just about them being able to accept someone that yeah you're you know, gonna point that out to them it, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. exactly help analyze this for us because from your perspective you know just the recent news with Landon Donovan not being selected yeah. how, as, as you sit there and you try to translate for the viewers who are tuning in this time of year when the cup is going going wait a minute one of the star premier players is not out there representing us how do you interpret that as an analyst for us well the the, the best way to put it is is everyone has to realize it's it's a new coach coming in trying to establish you know his team and he said right off the bat Jurgen Klinsmann that everybody's got to earn their spot Landon is from you know towards the end of his career he's 32 years old like I said mm -hmm. that's where you start getting towards the end of it it's like he was kind of on the border you know very talented player leadership and everything but Jurgen Klinsmann decided in the end it was about the team instead of the individual and for his team 
Yeah. And he's the one that makes the final decision for his team and what he wanted to accomplish in the World Cup. He didn't see Landon fitting in. And that's a difficult situation. And as I went through it and every player that is kind of that's been a star and seeing, you know, the career come towards an yeah. end, it's difficult changing, when someone yeah. tells you that your time is done. Right. Plus yeah. the coach is saying I run this team. Yeah, you know. definitely. That's I mean, it's that, a clear that's message. The way. It really is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very clear. Um, help, also, help us understand how this competition breaks out for people who are going to want to tune in. It was the 12th of June, right? This all starts. Yes, the 12th of June. How, how does this break down for us? It's in Brazil. It's in Brazil. I'll, get, I'll give you the general aspect. Brazil has won the World Cup five times more than any other country. They're like, you know, this when we talk about soccer, you think of Brazil. Right. Yeah. This is it. It's it's being played there teams from all over the world go through a qualifying process and now these teams are going to go through the knockout stages the first round and then the round of 16 and 8 and 4 and 2 to the final mm -hmm. and so on brazil's the favorite germany's the favorite and the u.s they're they're in the group of death supposedly what does that mean that doesn't sound pretty right you know? yeah. <laughs> their it first doesn't. game is on the 16th of june my birthday by the way remember Happy that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll remember that. Uh, they play against ghana Portugal and Germany. Now we look at it, Ghana's knocked the US out the last two World Cups. Uh, then we have Portugal that has the best player in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo, on the team. Oh, and then you have yeah. Germany that is probably one of the favorites to win the whole World Cup. So that's why the US yeah. is considered to be in the group of death, also because right. the US is in it. Now they're a team that isn't really considered a rollover anymore, so they can, you know, make it challenging within the group.